Ah. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay. If we haven't met already, uh, I make videos about pop culture with an emphasis on Broadway. So if that's your thing, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I make a brand new video. Also, if you want to see more of my face, who doesn't? This week's video is one I've been wanting to do for a really long time and now I finally get to do it. Uh, I, I kind of waited a little bit to like do it mostly because I was like kind of intimidated. Like I didn't know how to tackle this. You'll see why. Or you can probably guess by the title of this video. You'll probably know why. If you all liked my videos of summarizing the plot of Hades Town, summarizing the plot of Rocky Horror Picture Show, and other such musicals. Also, that's not an exaggeration because the Hades Town and Rocky Horror Picture Show videos are among the most viewed videos on my channel. I mean, it's backed up by science, my friends. So, I'm back with another video very similar to that, but this time I'm going to try to summarize Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. I know many, many people, both online and in real life, who love this show. I don't really get it. If you like this show, don't feel bad about it because like I think that that means that you're you're, you're pretty smart. You can follow stuff. I, I can't. Even though like I do have <laughs> I have a, a Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 shirt I got from like a, a gift shop I think in in um, in the theater district. I mean, I listened to the cast album. The cast album is great, but like I can't really follow the story. Again, I don't think that's a knock on the people who created the show. I just think that's just a knock on my own. Intelligence. Let's just say that. <laughs> the album is great, but like my brain like starts to feel like it's back in science class. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. And now I present the plot of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 for dummies. The show starts with Pierre, this guy, in turmoil. He's like, we're in the middle of a war and my friend just left to go fight in it and I'm spiraling into an existential crisis. And then out of nowhere, the rest of the cast pops out and they're like, oh, what? We can't hear you. Hello, audience. But then right away, the cast is like, so just so you know, the show you're about to see is complicated AF. We'll introduce you to these characters in one song and one song only. And if you don't get it by the end, yeah, you Set, steady your playbill. It has everything in there. Good luck. We can't control this. We're based off of material that was written during a time where all people did was read and then go to the town square to watch people get beheaded. So they go through every character and each character has like a positive trait. Like, she loves this guy. This woman is wise. He's the life of the party. They get to Pierre and he's like, hey on now. I'm in the middle of a crisis. The only thing this audience needs to know about me is that I'm a barrel of anxiety and I drink wine to numb the pain. It's just who I am now. So moving on, Natasha and Sonia are cousins. Both of their men are fighting in the war. Natasha is engaged to Andre, who's Pierre's friend who just went off to war, who also caused Pierre to go in, in, and become a, a anxiety-filled mess. Natasha and Sonia go off to Natasha's godmother's house in Russia, so they're not alone while their men are all fighting and shooting cannonballs, I think. I'm not sure if this is what because, like, fancy people just did back in the day, or if this is, like, a sexist thing, like, women can't stay by themselves while their men are at war. So Mario, the godmother, she, like, welcomes them in, and then she goes to Natasha, and she's like, oh, you got, like, plumper and prettier. And Natasha, I'm sure was like, thank you? Natasha turns to Sonia and she's like, I mean like, this is nice, but I'd rather have my man back. I've been making out with pillows. I'm desperate. So Maria busted and she's like, so anyway, tomorrow I was thinking we could go shopping and then we can get dinner, then we have a game night and you can read to me while I knit. And then she congratulates Natasha on like getting engaged and she's like, Andre is such a catch and thank goodness for you because otherwise his family's a lost cause. Also heads up, the dad doesn't like you, but if you win over the sister, then the rest of the family will follow. And Natasha, I'm sure, is like, thank you. <laughs> so then we meet old Prince Kolkonski. Oh my gosh. Ooh, that was rough. Who is Andre's dad, and he's like, I am old and I have no purpose anymore. I just lay around like a vegetable, stick a fork in me, I'm done. So Mary, who is Andre's sister, takes care of, of the dad. Now I'm gonna try to say his name because good God. Is he has to do everything your first dad, like bring him wine, like probably massage his feet, maybe cut his toenails, I'm not really sure. And then she has no reason to say no because, I mean, what else would she do? Because she has no friends, she has no social life, she has no love life. Even at one point, like, Holcomsi can't even find his glasses, and there's just like a minute of music where it's just him freaking out over. Or like how he can't find his glasses and Mary knows exactly where they are because they're on the top of his head but she's not gonna say anything because she is miserable. So Natasha arrives and she wants to like chat and like win them over but it doesn't go very well because the dad still makes it so apparently clear that he doesn't like Natasha and he even shows up to their little like get together in just his undergarments so like yeah, yeah no he has a lot of respect for her. <laughs> and then like Natasha and Mary they like, don't even like each other but Mary doesn't like Natasha because she thinks she's vain but I also think she's just jealous I'm just saying. But then Mary like tries to make amends and she's like you know I'm just happy 
happy that my brother's happy, you know? It's because because of you, <laughs> you know? Natasha's like, girl, bye. But that still doesn't affect her feelings for Andre. So really, I mean, I guess it could have been worse. I don't know, that sounds kind of bad. That sounds like that's going to show up on, uh, on Dr. Phil in about five seconds. Mario takes Sonia and Natasha to the opera. So they get there, like, all of, of, of this, this town is also at this opera, but then they also, like, just start, like, making fun of Pierre, and then they talk about him behind his back, and they're like, oh, he has no social life, that's why he's not here, that's why he's at home. So then Pierre goes, I'm having a great time at home, thank you. So the opera starts, and everyone's enjoying it, and then Natasha goes, I can't understand what's going on. And a man named Anatole, on the way to his seat, he's just like so like being like extra about it and he's like being really obnoxious and people like some, for some reason just like don't have a problem with it. I don't really get that. <laughs> and then while he's supposed to be watching the opera, he like keeps looking over at Natasha and he's all like, you know, making eyes at her while he's supposed to be watching the opera. And that's rude, Anatole. <laughs> and then he has the audacity to they go to her box and he like charms her and then invites her to a costume party or whatever. And Natasha, an engaged woman, and goes, okay, but like, I mean, I am I'm an engaged woman, but also I'm very confused about these feelings. So then later, Pierre, Anatole, and Dolokhov go to get drinks, and then like Helena joins them later. They go to what is called a bar, but I mean, if you've seen the show, they look like they're going to a modern day rave. Anatole's like, I just want Natasha to be mine. Dolokhov and Helena help me. I am desperate for this one true love. And then they're both like, um, you're married? <laughs> Anatole's like, sorry, what? I can't hear you. Also, Pierre doesn't like how much Helena, his wife, by the way. Ooh. <laughs> Pierre doesn't like how much Helena is like flirting with Dolokhov. Pierre, after I'm guessing eight rounds of drinks, is like, Dolokhov, do you want to duel? I think this is a fantastic idea. So they duel. Pierre hurts Dolokhov accidentally. So he's like, this is the end. This is how I go. So then he like braces himself to get wounded by Dolokhov. By wounded, I mean killed. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> but then like Dolokhov suddenly misses. But for some reason, that just like wakes Pierre up and he's like, oh, Dolokhov. Dolokhov missed, so that means I get to live my life even longer now. I was so ready to go, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm miserable and in an existential crisis. Oh dang, I almost ended my life. A life I hardly lived at all. And then he goes into like his 37th existential crisis that he's ever had in his life, which I mean, who hasn't been there? So the fact that he like has an epiphany, he's like, God, I'd like a second chance at life so I don't live my life as a sad sack of whiskey. I don't know. <laughs> Dasha, after a, a night of, of Anatole flirting, at her. And then Helena basically invites herself over to, to Maria's house where, you know, Natasha is, is staying, like I said earlier. She goes, oh my god, Natasha, you look so cute. You know where you should go and take your cute outfit? You should go to Anatole's costume party. You know that guy? Natasha's like, hmm, well, Helena's being very nonchalant about me possibly going to Anatole's costume party, even though she knows I'm probably already engaged. So, we should go. So Natasha goes to the party and Anatole is there and he like dances with her, yada yada. And then, Anatole has the nerve to kiss her. Like Natasha, she like actually enjoys the kiss and then she like remembers, oh yeah, I'm engaged. But then she's also like, I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. All right, boom, act two. Whew, act one was a doozy, so if you wanna like take a stretch break, I don't blame you. Anatole and Natasha make plans to get eloped. Ooh, things escalated between act one and act two. And oh, by the way, Anatole still doesn't know that Natasha is a married woman. Natasha breaks off her engagement with Andre via a letter that he's probably going to read after seeing yet another man die, probably by cannonball, or uh, something. I don't know, history was not my strong subject. Let's move on. So anyway, somehow Sonia gets a hold of the letter and then she like marches straight up to Natasha and she's like, are you dumb? What are you doing? You're you're gonna ruin your life. You've known this man for three days. Have you seen Frozen? And Natasha's like, but I feel like I've known this man my entire life. Leave me alone. And Sonia is like, piss. And then she's like, I need to save Natasha from herself while also simultaneously being like, Dolokhov goes to Anatole and he's like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but you could probably go to jail for, you know, marrying Natasha while also simultaneously being married to another woman, also possibly kidnapping her. And Anatole's like, oh my god, calm down, bro, it's totally fine. So then Anatole parties with his friends. It's also a going away party. I'm not totally sure if they're like going away forever or like going away for three days. <laughs> I'm not totally sure because I feel like eloping doesn't really take that long, you know what I mean? So anyway, after that, they go to uh, Maria's house to go get Natasha, but then Maria, like, you know, marches out of her house. She's like, uh, 
uh, uh, uh. She knows what's about to happen and she cuts the whole thing off. Like she knows what's about to happen because she's a snoop also. I mean, women are so smart, you guys. She knows what's about to happen and she chases off Anatole and like all of his like band of, of merry friends or something, I don't know. Natasha's so upset. She's like, why are you ruining my life? Mario's like, you are such a dumb child. I don't know how you're still alive. So Mario then she's like distraught. So she like thinks like, you know what? You know who I should call very late at night to remedy this problem? Pierre. So then Pierre gets a call and Mario is like, so I know it's late, but Natasha is distraught because I want to let her ruin her life with a guy she just met three days ago. Also, she broke up with her former fiance. Pierre's like, charge of jaw dropping. Cause now he's like connecting in his brain that Anatole, his friend, you know, Anatole's been like letting on that like, you know, he's like pursuing this one girl, yada yada. But then like Pierre didn't really know it was Natasha until now. Pierre's like, what the heck? He's married. And Mario's like, what the heck? He's married? So she goes to Natasha and she's like, did you know that Anatole is already a married man? Natasha's like, actually legitimately surprised. So Pierre runs around town to look for Anatole in like, I'm assuming like very Scooby-Doo style. So Pierre finds Anatole and Pierre's so angry, but Anatole, he like sees us and he's like, hey friend, what's up? What's new? And Pierre goes, Anatole, you're a scumbag. You're taking advantage of a young woman. I would smack you John Cena style, but instead the best thing to do now is you should leave Moscow. But Anatole, even as he's like, you know, about to leave town, he's like, what did I do wrong? I have no idea. Anatole, you're dumb. So meanwhile, Natasha's like, I've ruined my entire life, but by almost ruining my entire life. And then, you know, the logical next step is she poisons herself. But then, like, she's so angry with herself and she, like, just wants to poison herself and, like, kill herself so bad. But then the poison doesn't work and she lives. So I'm assuming she's, like, sitting there, you know, whatever, depressed and in, like, a dark room and just being like, stupid dick. So after that, Andre comes back home. So Pierre goes to him and he's like, can you just have, like, some compassion? Because Natasha's not very bright. Andre's like, Absolutely not. And Pierre is like, oh yeah, how about the girl in question that this whole thing is about? Maybe I should go, maybe, you know, check on her and make sure she's still alive. So he goes and Natasha's still in like a state of despair. Natasha's like, it's all over for me. I have nothing to live for. Pierre's like, no, don't say that. Why, if I was your age and I wasn't as ugly, I would marry you right now. And Natasha's like, uh, thank you. <laughs> but then through that interaction, Pierre finds hope and he finds meaning in his life. Pierre started out the show with this like existential crisis, like trying to find purpose in his life. And he's like an alcoholic and he doesn't know what to do. To save a young lady's life while she was feeling bad for herself and almost marrying this guy. And he finds meaning. And you know, I don't have a punchline for that because I think that's gosh darn beautiful. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what are your opinions on uh, Natasha Pierre, the great comment of 1812. Do you have a favorite song? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, tell me what show I should tackle next because I really like these types of videos, even though they're, I mean, they're a bit more difficult to do than like what I typically, you know, the typical videos I, I, I tend to make. But I really like doing these videos, so please let me know in the comments down below what kind of videos or what other show I should tackle next. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit the like button and share with all of your Natasha Pierre, the great comment of 1812 loving or maybe not so loving friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to me and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I make a brand new video. I make new videos every Wednesday. You can find me on my social media down below and I will see you all next time. Bye!